Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a process video showing how I made this art journal layout. I'm going to start with a blank page and build it up layer by layer using collage and soft pastels. If you saw yesterday's YouTube video, it was all about how to use soft pastels as a mixed media art supply with, with stamps and stencils or as a water soluble. And today I want to show you how those techniques work in the wild. If I go a little bit fast, if I just plow through, you can always go back to yesterday's video and it's going to be a lot slower, a lot more detailed, and it's, it's all there. If you like journal arts, altered books, and vintage books and paper, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go make a page. The pastels that I'm using in today's video are by Paul Rubens. And they sent me this box of 72 pastels. They sent it to me so that I could use it in my own work, that I could demonstrate them in videos and tell you what I think. And what I think is I like them. A pastel is basically just pure pigment pulled together with some binder into a stick shape. And these do have a heavy pigment to binder ratio. So you get a lot of uh, color in a little tiny stick. They are on sale and I've got a link to them in the text below this video. However, I want you to know and YouTube wants you to know that I did not get paid for this video and I don't make any money on pastel sales. I don't want to. I do like these though, and um, they are good in different kinds of work, including making art journals. I'm doing this layout in an art journal that I made a few months ago here on YouTube using three sheets of brown packing paper. No sewing. So if you'd like to see how you can make your own blank book, that would be a fun, resourceful thing to do this weekend. I have a link to this video in the text below uh, this one. Let's see. I started off over here with some uh, molding paste and a stencil. I did not use this stencil. This stencil is at home in uh, some warm soapy water waiting to be washed. It's in my kitchen. But... I used a stencil and what I did was I added some molding paste. I just squeezed the molding paste over the stencil and then used a card to work it in to the spaces of the stencil. Again, this is a technique that I showed yesterday in detail. So if you have any questions about it, please check out yesterday's video. I go through this part nice and slow. After the molding paste is worked into the stencil, you pull it up and you're left with a little bit of a relief. It's got some texture there. So I let that dry and I had some left over on my stencil. So I came over here and just wiped it off like that. Don't like to waste it. And now I'm ready to add some color to this, some contrast using those soft pastels. But I'm not going to start with that because I'm not sure what colors I want to work with. I'm not going to know until I get some of the focal points down and they start talking to me about what colors to use. I do know that I want to start over here with this postcard. This is a vintage postcard and I'm going to make it into a pocket that I can use as a kind of a, a pocket or a tuck spot where I want it to go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to mark off where I want that. And all I'm going to do is add glue to this side, this side, and this side. And then put it down like this. So it's going to be glued down on three sides and open on one. You can't slide a whole lot into that one 
uh, these thin pockets, but you get a little bit in there and it's fun. So that's my points where I want it. I'm going to go put this under uh, some wax paper and a book and let it dry for uh, 20 minutes. I chose my focal points before I got started. You may be watching this from the future, but if you're watching it today, it's the end of June and it is summery outside and I have flowers on the brain. So I cut out this gardener from an old magazine called The Girl's Own Paper. And then I have some flowers here. This is also from The Girl's Own Paper. And I'm gonna be putting those down and working in and around those in a mo. But because this is already black and white heavy and it's going on brown paper, I wanted to add some more color, which of course I am going to be adding color with the pastels, but first I wanted to put down a color for border to work in and around. This is a page of wildflowers, and I use these a lot for uh, focal, uh, for embellishment in uh, altered books and art journal pages. What I'm going to do is rough tear just to the eye and that's where my I'm going to be making this into a border. I do have printable scans of these wildflower sheets. They are free and they are on my website. There's a link to that in the text below the video. So go get them. Okay. Now I'm going to do something like this. There we go. And I am going to go ahead and pull it across this postcard. I'm going to glue that down and then come back and start decorating. I glued down the border, but before I pressed it flat, I made sure that I went in and trimmed here where the pocket is. So when it's lying flat, it looks like one continuous line, but this is going to let me use that pocket and insert some elements and make some layers. I went all around the border here with this dark, bright, but dark coral color. Why did I choose this? I don't know. I do know that I wanted some bright color. Um, I swatched a couple, swatched a couple of them, and I knew I wanted to use green, but I didn't want it to be green heavy. We've already got the foliage. I don't know, so I just thought I'd give it a shot. If it's not the effect I thought it would be. That's okay, and it's what I sometimes teach here about learning by doing things wrong. Of course, that's not going to be wrong. It's coral. It's going to be good. But if it's imperfect, lean into it and learn from it and try it different next time. It's just paper. I am going to pull this color out into the page by activating it with some gesso on this brush. And I use this technique a lot. I love it, especially when you're doing a sort of distressed, messy art journal page. It softens the color and the borders of that strip here and gives you a little bit more of a messy canvas to add your focal points to. I'm I'm happy with that. It was not a mistake. I'm thinking about adding my focal points 
But before I do, before I start gluing things down that can't be unglued, I want to add some color using the pastels to this, um, these raised letters, this stencil work. So I'm putting the focal points where they're going to go ish so that I can get an idea about color and balance. I made this card yesterday. It's an altered playing card and I used the pastel to go around and ink up my edges, color the edges, blend them and make them uh, fun. And I know that that's going to be going over here in the pocket. So one thing I can see is that I've got green on this side of the layout. I've also got green throughout the foliage on the border and a little bit here on the flower. But what I don't have is in this corner. And I think because the eye is drawn over here already, I want some green on this side to pull the eye across from here to here. And I also have a little bit of blue here and I know I'm gonna add some blue embellishment in a few minutes. So I think I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna do some green and blue on these raised letters. In yesterday's video, I showed several ways that you can add color with soft pastels to this raised stencil work. So if you wanna see that a little bit slower, Check that out. Today, we're gonna kind of just plow through it. I am adding using kind of a light touch here. You can always go in and add more. And let's see, I'm gonna add that really pretty sap green. layer the colors a little bit and pull it out here again we want to balance out this green pull the eye here so let's see how this is starting to look i'm going to smudge that in to the letters using it's just some kitchen towel here And that has turned out nice and light, very pastel pastels. Shake up some of that. And I actually want to darken that up a little bit. This is a tiny bit more uh, pastel in the sense of color uh, than I usually use in my palette. So I'm going back in over it with a darker, heavier green. Again, this is more of a, I guess a grass green. But these colors do layer well. So don't be afraid to go in there and mush them about. I'm ready to glue down my focal points and I wanted to say a couple of words about where they go, about where you place your uh, images in your collage. Over here, I could put it in the middle of the page, which is fine, but there's something called the rule of visual thirds, which says that if an image is placed to one third of the side of the page or the other third, that it's actually visually more interesting. And I almost always find that to be the case. That's just a little bit too, um, it's, it's a little boring. Now, I do like that, but it's kind of shoving her out of the way. Let's see, what do I think? That's not bad. But I think what I'm gonna do is, is pull it a little bit here, it's still off to the third, but it's covering up the line of this, this postcard pocket and is almost becoming part of it with the text. And I think that just has a lot more balance 
as the page develops as a whole. I am going to make sure she doesn't lose that rake. It's, <laughs> it's almost um, kaput. Uh, again, she could be going up here or... But I think I'm going to go and pu pull her all the way down as if she's gardening. And this is part of the bed, maybe, that she's gardening. And again, this. You should move your points, even if it's just a little bit. That makes a difference between that. And it just does. So be sure and move your points, your, your focal points, just a little bit to see how they balance. I'm going to glue those down. I am using an acrylic gel medium. You can also use a PVA, a craft glue, or even a glue stick. Now that the basic layout is in place, I want to do some embellishing or as is technically known in the art world, the fun part. I want to add a little bit of color to these black and white flowers to balance off the color over here. So I have found a pastel that is a, a nice dark cherry color that I think is pretty close to that. This is some greaseproof paper. It's a parchment paper. And I'm just going to use this into a little ad hoc palette. I'm rubbing. You can see I'm rubbing the pastel there. And now I'm going to take my brush, dip it in some water. And when I put my brush into that little pile of pastel, it now is water soluble and lets me use it as a paint. So this is very good if you're in a pinch and you need to add some color and maybe you don't have uh, your watercolor kit with you or whatnot. So this is just gonna add a little bit of dusty color. And then I'm also, you can see that I've done the same thing with this dark blue. And I really want to do something to emphasize that blue over here. So again, I'm going to take a wet. My brush has just got some water on it. And I can pick up that color and go. I do not know what these are. Jack in the pulpits. But I can... Use that pastel as a water soluble. And now just add little. I'm not going to color this comprehensively. That's not what this is. This is an art journal. So I just want to suggest some color. And in fact, I like leaving some of it black and white. It's a little bit mysterious. I want to add something to this corner up here. And I'm looking at the balance of this, and I've got blue here and blue there. And I think I'd like the eye to go from there to there in a triangle, which will pull the layout together across the two pages. So I want some blue up here. I've got this rubber stamp, and it's a butterfly. I'm going to use some of the soft chalk pastel on this stamp, because you can do that. If you'd like more detailed instructions, they're in yesterday's video where I show the techniques. But basically, you want to get your stamp wet so that the chalk, so that the pastel color will adhere to the stamp. If you put it on dry, it's not going to stick. Now let's see how that's working. Not bad. It's a little more distressed than it might be with a stamp pad, but I'm very happy with how that is looking. And again, you've got the blue and the blue and the blue. I'm going to add another guy there. So I'm going to re-wet my stamp. 
that's just some water there adding some more blue let's see let's make him a little bit at a different angle there there we go I put a couple of smaller blue butterflies over here to balance that out and to fill up the space a little bit. Speaking of, I want to put something here. And there's this tiny bit of yellow flower there, and he needs some company. So I want to add a little bit of yellow embellishment. This is a sticker. It's a honeycomb fragment. And again... I'm going to get the stencil itself quite wet with some clean water. And now I'm going to take this yellow pastel and just really coat that, especially since yellow's got a lot to fight up against in this busy layout. And now I'm going to add it. Yeah. Let's do that. Pull it across a little bit. Smush it down. And now I've got a little bit of honeycomb there. Oh, she doesn't need that. And I'm going to add a little bit more down here. This is the finished layout. And over here in the pocket, I do have that card that I made in yesterday's video. And I added another card. It's kind of a French cigarette card, and it's got uh, some flowers that pick up these colors nicely. So I am happy with this art journal page. I was asked in yesterday's comments several times about how to fix a page when you've used pastels. I rarely do. If you've used, if you've fixed the pastels with water or gesso or smudging, they should stay where they are. But if you're not sure, or if you've used pastels with dry work, you can fix the paper. If it is just for me and just for fun, I would use hairspray. I'm not even kidding. It's not archival, but it's good enough for the likes of me. However, if I am selling a piece, I will finish it with a spray fixative. This one is by Windsor Newton, and um, it's a matte varnish. Just spray it, and everything is staying where you want it. If you would like more information about these Paul Rubens pastels, the link is under this video, which is where you can also find out about my online classes and what's going on here at Book and Paper Arts. If you have any feedback or comments or questions, please let me know. I love to compare notes. Join me Sunday. I have a new unboxing of the latest French ephemera bundle boxes. Until then, happy making.